This is the story of one of the most incredible hiking trips of my life. It is also the first big adventure that my friends Robert, Phil and me have shared together ever since the three of us met in 2019 on the island of Tasmania, where we lived and traveled together for a few months. Three years later, in the summer of 2022, we finally got together again and headed out far north to a place that is known as the last great wilderness of Europe. The Sarek National Park in northern Sweden. Reaching this remote wilderness, which lies beyond the Arctic Circle, was obviously not a quick and easy journey at all. The drive from southern Germany all the way to the start of our hike was about 3000 kilometers, and we pulled it off in about three and a half days of driving. Knack it, knack it. Oh, knack it. Knack it. Knack it is not enough for seven days. It's time for some dinner by the lake. What do you got here? I've got some brain food. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Some muscle food. Some breakfast food. Some oh, yeah. healthy stuff. It even says healthy on it. <laughs> yeah, some some unhealthy. Yeah. like 2 a.m. I think or even later than that at least 2 a.m. Uh, and you can see it's not even entirely dark outside yeah I mean it's still August so uh, this is what remains of the polar night we only had a limited time frame to do this hike so we drove long into the night in order to get to the national park as soon as possible. Found an amazing camping spot out here in the forest by a huge wild river. And check this out. It's uh, 3 a.m. now and pretty bright outside already as you can see. And it's like 2 degrees outside. You know? Gonna put on some warm stuff, set up the tent and yeah, go to sleep I guess. Our last night before arriving at the national park was very short, but we slept right next to some massive whitewater rapids that we obviously had to check out the next morning. We started our hike from a parking lot in a small village called Kvikjok. Backpack is so heavy. The trail immediately led us into the dense and lush old growth forests with mushrooms, berries and flowers wherever you look. Any huge mushrooms here? Yeah, 
Sehr schön. Es braucht Zeit. Und lange Wert schmeckt gut. <lacht> Apart from the hiking trails, these old growth forests at the foot of the mountains have remained entirely undisturbed by humans. This means that this ecosystem has developed naturally ever since the last ice sheets had receded from here around 10,000 years ago. After 10 kilometers of hiking, we were surprised with an absolutely incredible campsite on a small peninsula on the Stuardata Lake. mission picking dead branches off of dead trees because this is actually not part of the national park yet so fires are allowed and we're gonna have ourselves one Second day of hiking, we followed the famous Kungsleden or King's Trail. We constantly had to change our clothes because short rain showers would come and go all day long.
As we hiked uphill, we went from the rather dark pine and spruce dominated forests into the bright and bushy moor birch forests. Here in northern Scandinavia, the moor birches are the only actual trees that grow at higher altitudes. But as we went even higher, the moor birches too gave way to an open alpine environment and we caught our first glimpses of the majestic mountain landscapes. Collecting some blueberries for the oatmeal breakfast. We found this little shelter hut yesterday. There were some other people there. We camped outside though because there's not so much space inside. Uh, the other people left already and we're gonna have ourselves some breakfast now. The hut also has like this little toilet house and a river that's flowing over there to get water and a beautiful field of Weidenröschen flowers. All the way up to this shelter hut, we were following an actual hiking path, but after breakfast, our journey would lead us off trail into the real untamed wilderness of the Sarek National Park, where we would have to find our own way. The goal for this day was to reach a viewpoint that we had only heard about on the previous day from an old Swedish hut warden. This meant we had 10 kilometers of unknown and wild terrain in front of us in order to reach this point.
after this unbelievably epic and somewhat sunny evening came a night with one of the heaviest storms that I have ever experienced. The morning wasn't much better, but at some point we just had to get out into the rain and begin another 10 kilometers across the wild tundra. Oh man. At this point we were confronted with a huge plain of swamps that we had to cross because walking around it would have taken too much time. So we just had to accept getting some really wet feet. with an open and empty hut that was built by reindeer herders and there were even a few beds inside. We almost couldn't believe our eyes when we stepped outside of our little hut. Because as we had no internet, we also had no kinds of weather reports and so this blue sky was an incredible surprise for us. Most importantly, it enabled us to dry all of our stuff that had gotten completely soaked during the last days. So, today we're just going on a day trip without backpacks, about five kilometers into that valley ahead here, because we want to check out the big glacier, the biggest glacier of the Zarek National Park. Yeah, it's called the Borde Jagna. <laughs> the weather is insane. It's been raining so much yesterday. Dear visitors. As we got 
closer to the glacier, the vegetation on the ground became more and more sparse. The grasses and shrubs of the tundra gave way to a landscape dominated by rocky debris and gravel. And the last few hundred meters before the glacier were completely devoid of any visible plant life. After having spent the second night in the hut, we made our way back towards the trail. But to get there we had to cross another 10 kilometers of wild terrain in rainy and foggy weather. And there were also a few rivers that we had to cross. trail again, we descended back into the more birch forests. absolute luxury in the Sarek National Park and there's really no way to leave this place with dry feet. was also the rainiest, but it's always good to remember that these magical forests are only flourishing the way they do thanks to the large amounts of rainfall that they receive. So in a way we can be very thankful for this weather. Nonetheless we were also immensely thankful to arrive back at our car and take a trip to the nearest supermarket. <laughs> <laughs> 
living for seven days with this raw and ancient nature is a powerful experience in itself. But all this time in the wilderness will also really make you appreciate even the smallest comforts of civilization, like just having dry feet for example. Music